Hey, loser. I just wanted to let you know that I just heard from the bank and it sounds like I'm going to get that job after all. I bet that you have got to be so jealous of me right now. Are you? I bet that you are. You don't even have to tell me that you are. I mean, you barely even passed high school. So what are you doing with your life that you have to be proud of anyways? <laughs> so you are going to go and work for the bank after all? I guess it's a good thing that you enjoy doing exactly whatever mom and dad tell you to do. I'm not only applying there because they wanted me to work there. I'm applying there because that's where I want to work too. What do you even know about having a real career, huh? You only have a high school diploma and could never in a million years do the kinds of things that I've done. Or will do. Wow, you are really hung up on my high school diploma, huh? You must think about that more than even I do. Well, of course I do. You're like a marker on the wall that I can always back on to see how much I've grown. I mean, you're consistent in the way that you never even try to accomplish anything with your life. Why are you being like this to me, Rachel? I mean, we're sisters and I don't like being treated this way by you. Do you really think this is a good way to talk to others? Don't you know that one day all of this looking down on other people is going to bite you in the butt? <laughs> Look down on others? Don't worry, I don't do it to everyone. Only the people that really deserve it. Like you. Aw, see, you are special in your own way after all. And I'm not the only one that looks down on you like this. Mom and dad feel the exact same way. So who am I to go against what they've decided about you? I don't even know why I bothered responding to your text. I knew that you were going to act like this towards me. Well, I am through with this. I don't see any point in keeping up with this conversation. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, I guess I'll just throw away all of your belongings then. What on earth are you talking about this time, Rachel? Well, I just mean that you're the only one in the family who was never ever going to work in a bank. All you do is mope around the house all day doing nothing. Okay, I think we both know that is not true. I do very little moping, thank you very much. I have a job that I enjoy, I work hard, and I contribute a lot to our expenses. In fact, I'm even paying for part of your tuition with the money I give to mom and dad. I know all about how you pay that. <laughs> After all, we're all elite bankers. So why wouldn't you pay for someone as great as me to go to college when the same thing would just be wasted on you? And that point of mine is just proved by the fact that I got this job at the bank. So there. In fact, now that I have this job, it really does just make me realize how useless you are. That's why I'm going to make you move out of the house. You're just not needed around here anymore at all. Of course, I've wanted to do this for a long, long time, but it wasn't until now that I was sure it could work. Are you serious? You're really going to try and throw me out of the house? Well, I'm already dumping out all of your stuff. If you want to make sure it's not all gone, you had better come back home and get it all right now. Well, well, this all escalated really quickly. But, Rachel, I'm just curious if you know just how much money I've put into the house. I mean, even more than our older brother. Out of all the siblings, I've contributed the most to making sure that mom and dad still have a roof over their heads. In fact, I don't know if our brother has even spent a cent of his own money to do anything for mom or dad or, or any of us. And so what? Do you want a medal or something? You've been living with mom and dad, so of course you're going to put money into the house. But think of it this way. You won't have to do that anymore. It's perfect, really. I'm going to cut you off from our family and you won't have to think about us again. You really mean it? You just want me to up and disappear just like that? Of course. Now that I have this job, mom and dad won't be needing your money anymore. So you can just take your things, leave, and then never ever come back. <sighs> I don't even want to have to think about you ever again. I want it to be like you just dropped off the map entirely. I mean, at this rate, it really would just be better for everyone if you did that. Don't you know that you're nothing but a burden to everyone around you? You know, I really didn't think that you would actually ever try to take things so far. But despite all your insults, I've still stuck around to help out the family, including you. But I guess you're not impressed by all of that. So fine, 
If that's what you really want, then I'll just go. And I guess this also means that I can stop giving the family money. Just think about the amazing place I'll get to live with all those savings. That and all the things that I'll get to be able to do but wasn't able to because of family obligations. I don't care what you do with your life or where you go. You're nothing but a loser and you are never good enough to be one of us. You've never accomplished anything at all. You don't have a boyfriend. You don't have anything going for you. Even after you move out, you're still going to be alone for the rest of your life. Nothing you say is ever going to convince me that you're worth having around. Well, okay then. You say all that now, but I think in a little while you're going to regret all of this. But that's fine with me. If anything, it feels like a huge weight has just been taken off of my shoulders. So just make sure that you keep up your side of the bargain and never ever bother me again, okay? And don't come crawling back to me for help, either. I have no intention to ever help my family after they have been so awful to me this entire time. What in the world do you think you're doing here, huh? I mean, really, have you lost your mind or something like that? You've got some serious nerve even showing your face around here again. Well, who would have guessed that I would have run into my elite banking family at this wedding of all places? Wow, sometimes the world really is a small place, isn't it? I mean, what can you say in this situation except, wow. Don't you act like this is just some complete coincidence that you don't know what's going to happen? You snuck into this wedding, didn't you? You must have found out somehow that we were all going to be here and that's why you snuck in here, right? No, I haven't really thought about you or anyone else from the family in a long time. I really am just as shocked as you are. You're a liar. You are lying and I know it. You had to have looked into us or found the guest list for the wedding or something. How else would you have known that we were here? Well, I just explained to you that I actually didn't know that you were here at all. But if you want to know how I ended up here at the wedding, first I received the invitation in the mail, then I RSVP'd to the wedding, and then finally, I showed up today. Oh, please. You really expect me to believe that? You really think I'm going to buy that you were actually invited here? There's no way that that could be. There's no way that any wedding where we were invited would be a wedding where you would also be invited. It just doesn't make any sense. Rachel, is this really how you want to greet your sister after we haven't talked in eight years? Of course not. I would rather not have this conversation at all. I thought that I was never ever going to have to see you ever again. You know, with all that screaming you're doing, you're probably scaring some of the other wedding guests. Can you at least learn how to sit still and keep your mouth shut while you're angrily texting me? I mean, really, it's just a bit rude to the bride and groom, don't you think? I am not going to have this conversation with you, Ashley. I just want you to leave and come back. Right now, okay? I'm sorry, but what makes you think that you have any right to be able to boss me around like that, huh? I mean, do you really think that I'm just going to turn around and go home because you told me to? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, huh? Besides, you still haven't actually told me why you're here at my wedding. Because there was no way that you were actually invited here. And since I know that you don't belong here and weren't invited, you should just go now. You really have no idea at all what you're talking about, do you? No, you're the one who doesn't know anything about anything. If you did, then you would know better than to show your face in a place like this. Well, okay. If you really want me to go, then I guess that I can. But the only problem is that I'm the CEO of the company where the groom works, so I just hope I don't hurt his feelings. Wait, what? That doesn't even make any sense. What do you mean that you're a CEO? Well, I was invited to the wedding by Harry, the groom, right? I know that it might be a bit hard for you to accept what you're about to hear, but I really don't care because I don't like you. The truth of the matter is that Harry invited me to his wedding so that I could give a speech to honor him. But that doesn't make any sense at all. I don't get how this is happening. I mean, how do you even know Harry? I'm sorry, Rachel, but I literally just finished explaining everything to you. I don't really have time to just talk in circles with you, so I'm just going to go home like you said, okay? I hope you enjoy the rest of your wedding, though. Ashley, are you here? 
Please tell me that you're somewhere nearby right now. You need to come back to the wedding right now. It's an emergency. Wait, what? But I don't get it. Just a while ago, you were telling me about how I didn't belong here and how I needed to leave, right? Besides, I thought you said that you never even wanted to think about me again. It's pretty strange that you're texting me begging to come back now. Oh, just shut up about that. I don't care about what we've said in the past. This is about the here and now. Well, I'm afraid that I've already done as you asked and I left to go back home. So what is it that you want from me? Well, when everyone found out that Harry's boss, who was going to give a speech, had gone home, the whole wedding turned into complete chaos. And I think that if I were to try and sneak out of the wedding right now, that people might guess that I was the one who told you to leave. So as you can see, I am in some serious trouble right now. That is why you have to come back here right now. I'm serious. Hmm, I see. Well, that is a very tough spot to be in, but I think I'm going to pass. Thank you. What do you mean by that? I mean that even if I did come back, since people have already noticed, I don't think it would fix the situation how you think it would. Besides, I think that you need to learn a lesson after the way that you treated me. I'm sure that it's just a matter of time before Harry finds out the truth anyways. Besides, I already told my secretary that I left, so... You told your secretary? Then it really is true, isn't it? You really are a CEO of some company? Yep, that's what I've been trying to tell you this entire time, but you haven't been listening. After you threw me out of the house, I went out and started doing the things that I wanted to do. And that included going out and starting my own business as well. So I worked hard and started from the ground up. I poured my heart and soul into my company, and thankfully I happened to have a lot of great people who were there to help me along the way. Oh, wait. Harry just announced that they were going to postpone the wedding in light of all that's going on. Oh, really? Wow. I can't believe that actually would do something like that. Of course, most of the employees are quite familiar with my personal background and family problems. What do you mean? Why would you tell all your employees about that? What kind of CEO would even do that? Well, when I was trying to recruit people to come and work for me, I had to give them a vision to believe in, right? So I told them about how my family threw me out for not conforming to their sense of elitism and that I went out to start my own business. I think a lot of people were really inspired by what I had to say, and Harry was one of those people. So I think that when he puts it together that he invited members of my family to his wedding that I went missing from, well, I'm sure you can do the math. But don't you see how I'm going to get into a lot of trouble for this? I mean, if anyone finds out that we're related and that I was the one who chased you off, then that's going to be really, really bad for me. The wedding won't just be postponed, it'll be cancelled. Yeah, it sounds like it might come to that, actually. <laughs> this isn't a joke. This is serious. This is my life, okay? What am I supposed to do right now? You have to do something about this. You have to set everyone straight, please. You're really coming to ask me for help right now? What is it that you even think I could do for you? Well, I mean, you could come back and tell everyone at the wedding that I had nothing to do with this at all. But that isn't true. You did have everything to do with this. I think you really want me to just get you out of this pickle without having to learn any kind of lesson to be punished. But the fact of the matter is that you threw out the person who was going to give a speech to your fiancé. But none of this even makes sense to me. I mean, you only have a high school diploma. When I saw that you had snuck into my wedding, I knew that it was because you were up to no good. That's why I had to kick you out the moment that I saw you. Rachel, for the last time, I was just as shocked to see you at this wedding as you were me. We haven't talked in eight years, and I really thought that was just going to go on forever. Why in the world do you think I would even want to sneak into your wedding? What do you think I would gain from that? Well, I mean, I, I just, I, I had no idea that you were actually a CEO. You should have told me that from the very start. What are you talking about? You were the one who for 10 years has been putting me down for my lack of education. You were the one who came to me all upset because you thought I wasn't invited and that I had snuck into your wedding. Even if I told you everything, it's not like you would have listened to me in the first place. Well, how was I supposed to know that you went and started your own company when we haven't even spoken in years? 
I don't know what you want me to say to that. You were the one that kicked me out of the house. You were the one that said you never wanted to talk to me again. And it was you who told me to leave your wedding and never ever come back. And now you want me to try and undo all the damage that you've been setting up for yourself for nearly a decade? Well, sorry, but you did this to yourself and it's not my job to fix it for you. The fact of the matter is that you caused this and this is all your fault. If people get mad at you for this, then I say more power to them. But I want you to know that I had no idea that you were Harry's fiance at all. Of course, now that I do know that, I just feel bad for him since it's clear you haven't changed at all. You mean you really didn't know? This was all just a coincidence. How many times are you going to make me repeat the fact that I was? I really wish you would wake up and quit trying to think that you're some kind of infallible superhuman or something. Honestly, I had no idea that you were getting married, and even if I did know, I wouldn't care. The only reason I was there was to support an employee of mine. And the only reason I left was because the rude bride kicked me out. Please, I'm... I'm, 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 I'm sorry for everything. You're right. I've been a jerk and you haven't deserved any of this. But I really need your help right now. You have to come back here right away. I I'm begging you as your sister. Are you stupid or something? You and I are not sisters anymore. That ended when you kicked me out of the house eight years ago. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go back to my life, married with kids, and the CEO of a very successful company. Wait, what? You're married and you have kids? Are you kidding me? When did this happen? I really had no idea about any of this. Hello? Are you reading these messages anymore? Answer me, Ashley! After that, I heard that Harry decided to call the wedding off entirely. Needless to say, Rachel was just crushed when she heard that. Harry told me all of this later on at work. I reassured him that it wasn't his fault, and he reassured me that it wasn't mine either. In fact, apparently he was already having second thoughts about the marriage as he learned about the kind of person that my sister was. And I told him that he was probably dodging a bullet by doing this, and now that that's all over, I can finally go back to ignoring my horrible family and getting back to my amazing life without them. As for what Rachel did after the wedding, I really am not quite sure. I really hadn't kept up with her or my family for the entire time since she kicked me out of their house and my parents never did anything to stop her from doing so. Although years and years later, I heard through the grapevine a little bit of what had happened to her. Apparently, after her wedding to Harry was canceled, she fell into a pretty deep depression. She was so sure that nothing she could ever do could be wrong, and on that day she learned just how wrong she really was. Then the situation got so bad that she even stopped showing up for work. I heard that not long after that, she was fired and moved into a tiny apartment all by herself. As to what she's been up to with her life since then, well, I can really honestly say that I have no clue. And if I can do anything about it, I intend to keep it that way. I can't do this with you anymore. I'm done with you. Let's get separated, Mary. Goodbye. Okay, cool. Let's do it, Steve. Wait, what? Huh? What the hell is that about? Is that easy for you? Shouldn't you like, oh, I don't know, be a little troubled or something? How are you able to be so calm about all of this? You should be more shaken up or something. That's weird. You don't like it when I'm okay with you divorcing me? I don't understand why. You're the one that asked me for a divorce, right? You should be glad that I'm accepting of your decision. By the way, I want to know, what's the reason you want to divorce me? I got tired of your lazy and brutish behavior around the house. I'm done dealing with that kind of attitude. I frankly don't even look at you like you're a woman anymore. You're just a troll. Get the hell out of my house! Get out of your house? <laughs> You've got to be smoking something, right? Oh, wait, you thought I was joking? Oh, that makes way more sense now. No, I'm dead serious, Mary. I'm gonna get a divorce from you, do you understand? <sighs> Seriously, Steve? How stupid do you think I am? You really need to stop being so full of yourself. 
If you want to get a divorce, I will absolutely go forward with a divorce. Honestly, I really felt like this marriage was dead in the water anyway. You and I were just really not getting along anymore. There's no more spark. But I just wanted to hear your reason once, you know? I figured that there would be more to it than just, there's no more love anymore. You know how you've really become a fat whale recently? Wait, what? Yeah, if you compare yourself now to yourself a few years ago, you're like a baby elephant with how fat you are now. And you stop doing any of the chores around the house, you just do nothing. You're literally doing nothing as a housewife now. You serve no purpose around me, you know what I mean? And somehow you sit here pretending like you're all that. You really have a lot of attitude, huh? How about you act more like a lady and start making your husband look better for you, huh? Make his life a little easier. Hey, I have a better idea. How about I pick apart your argument piece by piece, huh? What are you talking about piece by piece? The only reason that I gained weight was because of my treatment from being sick last year. It's literally a side effect of my steroids. I know I'm fatter and I don't like the way I look either but I'm slowly starting to gain my old body back, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll be back to my old self in no time. The doctors also already told me that I should be back to my regular weight within the year. They're not too worried about it either, so I really shouldn't be worried about it either. I don't know about that. We'll see. I'm pretty sure you're just making up excuses for getting fatter anyway. You probably got fatter because of your own lifestyle, right? <laughs> Dude, don't get started with me. You're pretty round around the edges yourself. Hey, you can't say that to me. I'm a man. It can't be helped. Ah, uh, okay, so it's alright if you lose weight and become fat, but I'm not allowed to gain weight because of side effects from life-saving treatment? I'm really okay with whatever at this point. Everything you say has no effect on me at all. <laughs> Also, you were talking to me about how the chores around the house were starting to get sloppy. That would be because you quit your job, Steve. And after you quit your job, everything started going to shit. Because I had to start working a full-time job to make sure that our house was able to survive. I wasn't at home nearly as long as I used to be when, you know, I had a functioning husband. You're gonna blame it on my work? How dare you! I actually work full-time right now, too. You can't use that against me. I'm working my 9-to-5 job, too, and I'm actually making more money than you right now. But you don't seem to really be doing any of the chores at all, and I'm still having to pick up all the slack. You seem to be cutting back on the time that you come home on your own, too. No one said you don't come home to help out. I feel like, realistically, you just haven't realized that I'm having to do all of that for you. Stop being such a smartass. Oh my god. You're so annoying. That whole attitude is so damn annoying. Ugh. Ugh, so annoying. That's literally all you say as soon as someone shoves something in your face that proves you're in the wrong. You're such a child. <laughs> I was honestly considering getting a divorce with you two. I know, surprise, surprise, right? But you're sitting here telling me that the whole reason we're going to be getting a divorce isn't because of yourself or your attitude, but it's my fault, correct? You don't want to take any responsibility in the fact that this marriage failed. That's how I'm interpreting everything. Tell me I'm wrong. Of course, that's exactly what I'm saying. I literally have done nothing bad for us. You're the only reason that we are having to go through this, not me, you! Ah, okay, sure. I see. I actually have some plans of my own then, just so you know. I'm going to have to get everything ready for the divorce if you don't mind. I'm totally okay with us getting a divorce, but I need to get prepared and whatnot, so... You actually might want to start getting prepared too. I'm sure it's not going to be as easy and simple as you think. What are you talking about getting prepared? Whatever, I guess out of the kindness of my heart, I'll wait for you. If that's all it takes for me to be able to get a divorce with you, I'm okay with waiting around for you to get ready. <laughs> but you have to promise me to get the hell out of the house ASAP, okay? I told you, you must be crazy if you think that I'm going to be leaving this house. 
Stop being a nuisance, oh my god! I'm not gonna change my mind. I don't have time to be dealing with you, Mary. Such a busy man, don't you understand? I wanna move on with my life and go to the next girl, do you understand? You're just getting in my way. Okay, I'm not gonna be going home today, bye. Yeah, I don't really care what you're going to do. You really don't have to come home ever. Not just today. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, the divorce papers have already been submitted and accepted, right? Yeah, they have been. Congratulations, we're successfully strangers now. You must be so happy. Good luck with the rest of your life, buddy. I wish you the worst. You better stop messing with me, Mary. What? What the hell are you gonna gripe about now? Let me guess, you're still just sitting in my home and planning on living there, right? Why are you staying at my house when we've literally divorced each other? How the hell do you expect me to get home? It's awkward! It seems like you're coming home while I'm away anyway, right? That's what it looks like anyway. And honestly, I'm kind of getting tired of this whole shtick where you're saying that you don't want me to be here. You literally took the words from my mouth. Why do I, the owner of the house, have to put up with some stranger being in my house? I should be able to go home whenever I want. Wait, house owner? We've got a divorce already, Mary. You need to hurry up and get the hell out of my house. I'm going to be living my new life at that house. That house is where I want to start my next chapter. If you're sitting there, reminding me of all the old and bad news, then my life won't start, don't you get it? You mean, you want to live here with your mistress, right? That's what that actually means. Huh? What are you talking about? Dude, I figured it out. Stop pretending like you don't know what I'm talking about. It's useless and frankly insulting. The real reason you want the divorce is because you were having an affair, right? That's why you want me to leave the house ASAP. It's not because you want to start the next chapter of your life. You want to hurry up and bring in your mistress to disappoint her in our bed. That's what you're saying, right? I mean, if you've already figured that out, then yeah, I guess there's no point in hiding any of it. You've already gotten the divorce, so I guess it doesn't matter anymore anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I have someone I want to get married with already. A very special woman, in fact. You're just a nuisance, someone that gets in the way. I want you to get the hell out of my house, but you're just living there. As if it's your birthright or something. It's really starting to bother me and I can't stand it. Get the hell out! You should really start praying for our happiness, huh? How about that? <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to ask you this, but are you sure you're not making a mistake about something, Steve? What? Making a mistake about what? I don't get it. You really are the one making the mistake right now, Mary. You must sing that you are some kind of insane high-value wife that everyone will be drooling over. You're actually just some useless wife that has no worth when you're married. <laughs> How about looking in the mirror first and having that conversation with yourself? Before you start being rude and making regretful comments, you should probably calm down first. I feel like you think that you own the house, Steve. Is that what's going on? Stop saying things that don't make any sense, Mary. I've been telling you to get the hell out already. I'm gonna call the police on you. The police? <laughs> Why would you call the police? I don't know if you got some kind of feelings left from me that you're still dragging on or what, but you were dumped by me, don't you understand? Why are you still at my house? Get out! If you don't want me to call the police on you for trespassing, get the hell out right now! You realize that this house was built by my father, right? Wait, what? You know, I always knew you were an idiot, but I actually didn't think you were this stupid. How far are you going to take this misunderstanding before you snap out of your delusions? This house was built by my father, who was an architect. It has nothing to do with you. And just to be crystal clear with you, this house is absolutely in my name, and you haven't paid a single penny for any of the expenses, have you? The only person who should be leaving in this situation should logically be your dumbass. <laughs> Wait, what? Hang on, what are you talking about? It's my house, right? 
I'm the husband, therefore it should be my house. Yeah, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Besides, you were my husband, right? We're strangers now. You were the one that suddenly suggested getting a divorce out of the blue, and yet here you are. Coming back to my house that my father built specifically for me to live in. Are you starting to get the picture? You really are some kind of stupid. And then you were trying to chase me out of my own home. Are you being serious right now? <laughs> Your misunderstanding is actually kind of pissing me off too. You're the one who's going to be thrown out of the house, you understand? Pack your shit and get the hell out of here before I start throwing your crap out for you. Wait, hang on just a second, Mary. I need to calm down and understand what's going on right now. That house isn't mine? I thought since I was a husband, I would take the house in the divorce. I've been telling you time and time again that my father built the house for me, and so it has nothing to do with you. It's my house. <laughs> You have no rights or any other kind of power over the ownership of this house. Zip. Zilch. Nada. My father, the architect, built this house for his work as a demo house for his work. And when he was going to retire, he just gave the title over to me. Because, you know, I was his daughter and he practically built it for me to live in in the future. And yet you're sitting here, divorced from me, Saying that you think you have a right to live in this house? What the hell could you have been drinking, Steve? <laughs> Why would it ever be in your name? I don't see how that could ever be the case. I mean, that's true. I remember now, your father did build that house, didn't he? But I lived in that house too. For the longest time, we both lived in that house together. That means that the house at least partially belongs to me as well, right? Why the hell would it be in your name at all? <laughs> the title is in my name. I have been making payments on all the taxes that are required when you're a homeowner. To make things worse for you, I've been paying for the utilities too. You remember when you were unemployed for the longest time? I'm sure you were just living life in your pleasant little dumb brain without thinking about who's paying for what. You probably spent all of that money that you've earned and should have been spending on your wife and your home on your mistress to go have fun with her, right? I'm not sure who's the worst person in this whole thing. You had the gall to call me a bad wife? Gross. Wait, seriously, you're not lying? I always thought that it was all being taken out of my paycheck. Oops. If we took off all those fees, including taxes out from your paycheck, you'd basically be left with a little over $10. And that's on a good month. Most months were probably looking at being in the negatives. That's why I was paying for everything. All the while, I was fighting my disease in hospital and taking my medications, too. I'm okay now, so it doesn't really matter anymore, but... The fact that you were never there for me and only running around playing silly little games with your stupid mistress... Yeah... That was enough for me to never forgive anything and make sure that I would be getting a divorce from you, so... Really? I don't know about any of that. I was pretty surprised about the house thing, I'm not gonna lie. But you're gonna be okay with me living there, right? What? Are you serious right now? You're going to ask me to live with you after all this? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, we're gonna split our property, right? I know that it's not like you just take everything. I lived with you for the longest time too, you know. You can't just chase me out of the house without any kind of trouble like that. It can't be that simple. You didn't know anything about the house, and yet you want me to split some of the wealth, huh? Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry to burst your bubble, Steve, but I'm not going to share anything with you. What? Why the hell not? If anything, I'm going to be suing you for your money. Suing me? What are you going to sue me for, Mary? I'm going to be suing you for the emotional damage incurred by your affair. Wait, hang on, you can't do that. That's not possible. You've already got a divorce. Stop being so weird about all this. I don't know what's so weird about any of this, Steve. I'm pretty sure I'm being fairly reasonable in all of this. The only reason that I wanted you to wait a little bit before we filed for divorce was because of that. 
I needed to talk to a lawyer to get everything settled while I collected evidence from you. Evidence? You mean evidence about the affair? That's what you were doing while I gave you time? Yeah, and thanks to you, I've completely finished getting everything ready for the court case. I'm going to have you pay for damages for the affair. There's no changing that at all. And I'm going to be sending all of the proof and content of the investigation to your company along with your parents. You're done, Steve. Do you understand what all of this means? Before you start talking about whose house is whose and how you want me to share my wealth, you need to get the hell out of my sight. I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting you to be so harsh on me like that. Do you not have any kind of remorse or pity? You should take mercy on me, damn it! We've been married for five long years, Mary. You can't just cut me off like that. Mia, yeah, I don't really care how long we've been married for. There is no mercy. There is no pity here. And you know what else? There is no love here either. <laughs> I only see you as a failure of a human. Someone I shouldn't have wasted five years of my life on. I want you to disappear completely from my life. How about you leave my house before I call the police on your ass? <laughs> That's literally what I just said to you a second ago. Yeah, how did it take you this long for you to figure out that you're being completely illogical when you said you'd call the police on me? <laughs> The only way that you're able to leave the house is after I'm sitting here practically evicting you from the home that you lived in for five years. <laughs> what a loser. Seriously, I pity you. How could you be so rude to me like that, Mary? You must be looking down on me like I'm some kind of idiot. I hope that your mistress continues to love you even while you're sitting here with no home and a job that earns less than a high school paper boy. She's got to stay in love with you with all that baggage and someone who's almost in his late 30s. I'm not sure how anyone could possibly stay attracted to a man like that, to be honest with you. <laughs> you don't have to be so harsh on me, Jesus! Just so we're clear, I can't just leave the house right now. It's just not possible. I gave you time to get prepared, didn't I? I need time to get prepared, too. It's not fair if you just spring this on me. I gave you the exact same amount of time to get prepared, didn't I? I literally warned you and said that you need to get prepared when I said I would need some time. I was honestly confused and wondering when you were going to pack up your stuff and get the hell out of my house. <laughs> I didn't know that I was supposed to leave the house at all. I thought I would be living there with my mistress after the divorce. I have no intentions of ever leaving that house, just so we're clear. I've been living there for all this time, do you hear me? If you don't quit your whining and actually start packing your shit, I'm seriously going to call the police on you. You're the one that destroyed our house and family. It was all you. This is just karma coming to say hello. How about you give up already, Steve? Try to restart your stupid life with your own two feet, huh? And stop relying on your sick wife that you just want to call fat. It's my house. You need to come to terms with the fact and move out real soon, okay? Come on, Mary, please. I was wrong about all of this, I swear. What the hell? I really didn't expect you to ever apologize. What's going on? <laughs> if I don't have a home to live in, I'm seriously going to be in big trouble. I don't have enough money saved up to move into a new home either. I need some time. What the hell do you want me to do, Mary? Are you going to help me? How about you just move into your mistress's house, huh? She lives with her parents, so I can't just say, Hello, I cheated on my wife to have an affair with your daughter, but I was kicked out of my own home. Come on, we've been married for so long, Mary. You can at least help me out, right? It's the last time. You were trying to scare me into leaving a second ago. What's the difference between what you did and what I'm doing now? That was all just a huge mistake, Mary. Do you understand? I mean, your mistress doesn't live with her parents for sure, though. I know that much. Why don't you ask her for help there? Wait, what? I don't know what she was telling you at all, but I'm going to give you a nice little piece of information. Just from what I know, she definitely doesn't live with her parents. <laughs> it does seem like she's living with someone and doesn't live alone. 
But it's not her parents. Are you telling me that she was lying then? That this whole time she wasn't telling me the truth? Yeah, uh, this is where I stop helping you. You go ahead and work out whatever is going on there with your stupid side hoe, okay? I'm gonna change out the locks on this house real soon, so... I'll leave your stuff outside of the house so you're able to pick it up. If you don't pick it up by tomorrow, I'm going to be sending off all of your stuff to your office. Do you understand? Wait, hang on. You don't have to be so cold about all this, do you, Mary? We were married for so long. Please don't abandon me like this. I'm begging you. Please come live with me again. I want to live my life with you. I don't want to live with you at all. <laughs> We've already gotten a divorce and everything is already filed. You need to get the hell out of my house, you rotten piece of shit. <laughs> After a little while, Steve was found sleeping in the doghouse that was located in the yard of Mary's house. Without permission, of course. Mary called the police on him and they were able to chase him off the property and get a restraining order. In addition to all of that, when Steve asked the mistress about what was going on with where she lived and if she was already married, she just ran away from him like it was no problem. Steve was smart enough to follow her and figured out that she was already married. They both had to pay for all of the damages that happened when everything was brought to light, and it was a whole debacle. Mary got all of the damage payments from Steve and her house was basically brand new. She was able to sell it relatively quickly and use that money to buy a mansion and move into a new home. She completely moved on from Steve and has been living her life completely fulfilled and without a worry in the world. Completely opposite from Steve, who is homeless and currently drowning in debt. I wonder who got the better deal from this whole divorce. Jamie, why are you still living in my family's house? Hmm? What kind of question is that? Starting today, I'll be living at my parents' house again. What? I never heard anything about how you'd be coming back here to stay with all of us. Well, I did hear something, but that was about you coming next month for a little bit. What happened to that? Well, I have all this time on my hands right now, so I was thinking I might come sooner than planned. And when I told my mom I'd be coming, she said that you were still living in their house with them, and I was shocked. So you and my brother are still living in that house, together, with my parents? Yeah, and the plan was to continue living with both your parents for the long run. And, well, we had heard about how you planned to come back here and to have your baby. But we never heard anything about how you were planning on coming back today now. I don't think the room or anything else is ready for you quite yet. To be honest with you, I assumed you were no longer in that house, Jamie. But now it seems like things haven't changed at all, and that's just pitiful. Huh? Pitiful? What do you mean by that? I get that your room isn't prepared for you to come yet, but that's all due to you coming a month before we had planned. So why do you have to say things are pitiful because of me? I had nothing to do with that. You saying that you have nothing to do with it is not alright, Jamie. Are you really that irresponsible? I've already had a look at my room, and it looks like you've all just thrown all your things in there and left it like a warehouse. Well, nobody's been living there for a long time, so we didn't want to let the room go to waste. We also all thought that you wouldn't be home until next month, so there haven't been any preparations made for you yet. For some reason, it seems that all of you aren't as excited about me coming home as I first thought. What is with that attitude from you, Jamie? Would you stop acting like I'm not a part of this family, please? If anything, I have more of a right to this house than you or my brother do. I'm not trying to play things off as though you're not important or not wanted here. I'm just letting you know why your room isn't ready yet, and that's all. Is that right? Well, there was no avoiding this one, right? <laughs> you must be so jealous of me. Jealous of you? What are you going on about now? You are infertile, right, Jamie? What? I'm aware that you were jealous of me because you can't have a baby of your own due to you being... infertile. But just because you're a half-baked woman doesn't mean you can keep hating on me, okay? I'm oh so sorry that I was able to get pregnant this easily right in front of your eyes. <laughs> 
Nobody ever said I was jealous of you for getting pregnant, Lydia. If anything, you saying something like that to me is kind of hurtful. I've actually been quite happy about hearing that you're going to have a baby soon and wanted to congratulate you on that. That's just loads of crap. <laughs> you hate the fact that I'm pregnant and you're not, and that's why this house is all turned upside down. Hold on a second. What are you talking about? I feel like you've gone a little bit off the rails here and are just making things up about the situation. I'm not making anything up about you and the house, as it's all right on the mark, right? <laughs> but this is pretty scary. Having to live in the same house as someone like you. Scary? What about me is so terrifying for you? You are infertile, making you unable to bear a child, and that's made you all the more jealous of me and my baby, right? Right now, I don't feel like I can relax and live in the house well enough. I'm sorry to ask this, but do you think you can leave the house for me? <laughs> what? What are you actually talking about right now? What's so bad about me asking something like that? I only want you gone for as long as it takes for me to have my baby and then leave this house after. Just go find some place for the next couple of months and stay there while I enjoy my time living and relaxing with my parents. Could you please not recommend something like that to me? I don't even have any bad intention with you. So please stop thinking that I'm so jealous of you and let's just get on with us helping you move back in. Both Jack and I have no plans of leaving this house, so you're just going to have to live with that fact and learn to settle in with the rest of us here. I don't really care about Jack having to leave the house or not. I'm only asking that you be the one to get out of the house. You're only going to be back for a little bit to have some rest before having your baby, and you want me to leave the house during that time frame? I feel as though I'm the only one here getting shafted by your plan. Well, it's my family's house after all. I have every right to move back into that place whenever I'd like and choose who I want to stay and who I want gone. I am very well aware that this place is your family's home. But that kind of idea you have about your right to this place is way too self-centered. Well, whatever. We can talk more about this when we're all at the house. I'll help you understand just the kind of place you have in this family. <laughs> my place in this family? I'm not going to be taught my position in this family by someone like you, Lydia, okay? Are you well aware of your place in the family now? <laughs> What the hell were you thinking, Lydia? You just hit me in the face and then kicked me out of the house. I've gone out for a bit, and before I come back, I want you to gather all your things and get out of that house. I don't even want to see your face anymore, so make it happen quickly. <laughs> I am the one wanting to be back home relaxing before I give birth to my parents' grandbaby. However, all you're doing is just living there rent-free with nothing to offer them. You parasite. You have no right to be in this house. <laughs> But you have zero right using violence as a way of trying to get me to leave. An old and fertile woman like you is a pretty scary thing to have around a pregnant woman like me. <laughs> I get it now. You can't help yourself but make fun of me all the time, and that's why things like this have started. Calling me horrible names and even assaulting me like that inside the house? <laughs> You're going to regret what you've done to me. I can see that the both of us living in the house together is never going to work out now. And that's why I just told you what has to happen. <laughs> you have to leave the house because I have no desire to live in it with you. If something were to happen to me, what would I do? I'm the one carrying the most important thing to this family right now. <laughs> I get that you can't have a baby, but don't you dare start taking out that stress of not being a good enough woman on me. I have never wanted to take out any kind of stress on you. I'd really like you to stop using my infertility as the basis for all your claims about me, okay? Hitting me because of your misunderstandings of me? That's not okay, Lydia. I'm just afraid of you since a woman with pent-up jealousy over me having a baby could do anything to hurt me, or the baby when they're born. You are really causing me a lot of fear and stress, so you're going to have to go. I think you're better off having that baby with nobody around you. Huh? If you're going to say something as heartless as that to me, I might just have to tell both Jack and my mom about it. You can say whatever you'd like, but I'm your mother. Huh? Mom? I never thought that my own daughter would be talking to her sister-in-law that way. 
But I guess I really messed up raising you into someone that thinks things like that are okay. Hold on a minute, Mom. You have a total misunderstanding of things. Were you the one that just said that to me? That I should have my baby with nobody else around? That's not very kind or motherly of you to say, okay? What's gotten into you? Are you sure that Jamie isn't saying things to you right now that's gone and made you think that I'm the bad guy here? All she's done is shown me all the messages you both have been sending back and forth, and nothing else. I am oh so disappointed in you, Lydia. You're disappointed in me? No, oh, don't be so mean, Mom! You're no longer going to be staying here while you get ready to have your baby. What? I want you to stay away from this house for the rest of your pregnancy and have that baby somewhere else. And I'm sure the only reason you've come here a month before we hit all planned is because something went wrong between you and your husband. Well, you have no right taking out your frustrations on someone like Jamie, all right? I wasn't taking out any frustrations on her mom! I'm sure you had no clue about this before coming back here, but Jamie has been a huge help in maintaining financial support of this home. Your dad and I are really thankful for what she's been doing to help us. What? Jamie has been helping you guys financially? Does she really make that much money on her own? She sure does. But that's not the problem here, Lydia. The problem with you that's really gone and upset me today is the fact that you acted like this towards Jamie. All because she can't have a baby herself. Well, I'm not going to ever forgive your actions over some poor excuse like that. You definitely don't know this, but back when I was around your age, I had been worried myself about being infertile or not. Huh? You were, Mom? But you still ended up having both Jack and I, right? And that was after I went through some procedures to help with my infertility. I had been married to your dad for a total of 10 years, and during that whole time, we never had any kids. Now that you mention it, you might have hinted at some of that story a while back. Sorry, but I forgot all about that crap. I was very thankful that after all the work that had to be put into me, I was able to have the two of you. But having to see that my own daughter is going to use infertility as the basis for acting like a complete jerk to someone else? It's heartbreaking, Lydia. I never expected that you'd be the kind of girl to do this to another woman. I'm not only heartbroken, but in complete shock now. I'm going to toss all your things out right now. What? Mom, what do you mean you're going to toss all my things right now? Tell me! Don't you think you're taking things way over the top by doing that to me? I'm the one taking things over the top? What are you talking about, Lydia? If you find that you don't like the sound of that, then you get your butt back here right now and get all your things and leave this once. And I want you to go up to Jamie and apologize to her for both talking to her like a complete jerk and for hitting her in the face. What? Please, just hold on a minute, Mom. You know that I'm really close to having my baby now, right? You have another two months or so, right? I know that, but that's only a couple more months. If I'm kicked out of my own parents' house now, what am I going to do about myself and the baby? I was really excited to finally be home where you could take care of me all day and I could just sit around and enjoy my life. Stop trying to make yourself look like the one that deserves any pampering. I'm tossing your things out of the house right now. Hold your horses. You would never actually throw out a pregnant woman's things, right? I'm on my way back to the house right now, so please take some time to calm down and we can talk all that over again. Your mom has already gone ahead and started throwing out all of your things. Lydia, you did a really great job getting yourself kicked out of the house. Huh? Is this you again, Jamie? What the hell have you gotten my mom to believe all of a sudden? It's all because of you making her have a huge misunderstanding that she wants me to stay away from her house. And it's totally fair for her to want you out of her house, right? Huh? What the hell does all that mean? You're only starting to piss me off even more now by talking to me like that. Say what you'd like. I never told your mom anything to make her act this way. It all happened just as your mom said. She only had a look at my phone where all the messages between you and I were displayed, and that's what set her off. 
Besides, you both talking down to me for being infertile and also hitting me in the face as a way of teaching me something is not what your mom finds appropriate. No mom would find that all right, actually. Oh, come on now, Jamie. I just wanted to come home and get rid of the parasite that's been living in my parents' house. I didn't think my mom would get upset at me for trying to help her and dad out. Honestly, the fact that you're even still living in that house with her after all these years is a complete disaster for me. I'm not living here because I wanted a place to lay back and make your parents work for me. I'm here because I needed to be here living with them. I understand that as of right now, I don't have any kids of my own, but I've been making up for that by working my butt off all day at work and have been using that money to help your parents in this house. Last year, Jack went without a job for a little while, and during that whole time, I had to pretty much support everyone in this house. Huh? He didn't have a job. And just like I thought, nobody told you about that. I mean, it shouldn't really matter that you knew about that little fact or not right now, since it's not going to change your behavior or anything. What are you trying to say? Last year, your brother's company that he was working for went under, and for a little bit, he had been unemployed. But even when that happened, I stepped up my game and worked even harder in order to support everyone in the house. I was allowed to live in your parents' house after all with them, so I already knew I had to work for their sake. But when he lost his job, it only added to the amount of work I needed to put in. I never knew things like that were happening. But you're right to have never told me about that because it has nothing to do with me anyway. You're bringing up a bunch of things I never even knew about before, so how do you think that's going to help with the situation now? I just find it hilarious, well, also sad, that while you never knew a thing about what's been going on with your family here, you tried coming home unannounced to us and then became violent with me when I was only trying to state some facts about your room. All I can think of you as now is some kind of violent and easily angered child. Luckily, I'll probably never have to deal with you again after today. I hope you do well giving birth to your baby. I'm going now. What are you talking about? Are you just going to let me be kicked out of the house? Excuse me? Jamie, it's your fault that my mom is mad at me. You go and get her to stop acting like a monster and let me stay in the house again. How am I supposed to handle myself all on my own if I'm forced to leave? Weren't you just the one that hit me in the face and told me to get out of your house a little bit ago? I can see that you totally forgot about that little fact. Seriously, Lydia, what are you trying to get at now by saying something as selfish as what you've just said? Your mom has already lost all the respect she had for you as her daughter. And I don't think you're going to get her to change her mind on wanting you gone. And in my case even, I don't want you living here with me anymore either because I'm afraid you might try and assault me again. And just to make sure that you don't try and get any sort of revenge for what's happening to you, I'm going to call the police and tell them what you did to me. Huh? You're going to call the police? Why are you taking things way out of proportion here? I think that it's well within my rights to tell the police about you hitting me like that. You literally assaulted me by doing that. Assaulted you? You were being way too overdramatic about all that. Was just giving you a little slap on the face was all to let you know I was being serious about wanting you out of the house. I'm sure that someone like you who has trouble controlling their emotions would never be able to understand the kind of damage you just caused. But if you'd like to know just the kind of damage you did to me, you knocked out one of my teeth. Really? It was that hard of a slap? It wasn't even a slap! You had your fist balled up and hit me hard enough to both knock out a tooth and cut up the inside of my mouth. Well, I never thought it'd cause that kind of damage. And what do you mean I can't control my emotions? That's expected from someone who's pregnant with a child. Let me be clear about this, Lydia. What you've done to me today was completely uncalled for. And I think it's time you stopped using your pregnancy as an excuse for everything, because the police are sure not going to listen to that. I'm really not sure what happened with you and your husband that made you start going crazy, but no matter what it was, you are not allowed back into this house. Hold on for just one moment, Jamie. I've been having a really tough time lately. My husband has been claiming that the baby I'm carrying isn't his own, and so he kicked me out of the house for supposedly cheating on him. 
That's why I actually left the house before he told me to get out in order to hopefully get him to simmer down a little. But if you guys kick me out of the house, then where else would I be able to run to? I don't care. <laughs> what? If you really hadn't been cheating on him, then you wouldn't have been running away, right? And honestly, I don't care about what happened over at your house with your husband. I'm only worried about how you assaulted me and knocked out a tooth of mine. I think by this point you'd be best off cutting all that crap and handing yourself in to either your husband or to the police. Now, good luck with that. I can't wait to learn how all your actions bite you in the butt here soon. <laughs> in the end, Lydia's mom never did end up forgiving her for what she'd done to me and went to Lydia's husband to find out what was going on. When talking to him, she learned that he was in the middle of filling out divorce papers and would soon no longer have to deal with Lydia. Had Lydia just told us all the situation and moved in peacefully, her mom would have been willing to care for the baby, even if it wasn't Lydia's husband's. But even with all the help she could have offered, the fact that Lydia treated me in such an awful way made it impossible for her mom to forgive her actions. And for that, she was kicked out of her parents' house with all her things and forced to leave us.